former NHS chair. Front page of Telegraph today, Martin. Very good morning to you. Uh, NHS morning, in Mike. decline for the first time in 50 years. Um, well, we could have seen this coming. We could have told them that's what it was going to be saying. Um, what do we do now? Well, Mike, I think we could have... Good morning, by the way, and, and a great show, mm. as always. Um, I, I think um, we could see this coming. I mean, if you look at the uh, time of, of lockdowns, uh, when we were told to protect the NHS, yeah. um, Peter, people did um, protect the NHS by not rocking up to see the GP, who was probably closed anyway. Um, and we now have a, have a ridiculous backlog of, of people needing care. Um, it was interesting to hear the lady you had on earlier uh, from Wales on uh, uh, and her her experience of her mother I know. sleeping in a car park. Yeah, with a brain infection. I mean, for heaven's sake. Yeah, uh, absolutely unbelievable. And, and and I have close relatives in Wales as well, and and I could tell you similar stories. But coming back to the the the, the, the ba basically the NHS is broken. Uh, kind of, uh, and, the, and, the, and the horrible Tories broke it. Yeah. At the end of the day, what is happening and what will continue to happen um, is that the system as it is just simply doesn't work right. and, and never will work. And I think I, in, I, I'm going to be quite generous to our present, our new Secretary of State, because I think he knows that. And I actually think he'd probably like to change it. And my, I, I guess my message will be, well, good luck with that. Right. Um, because what has he got? He's got the unions, uh, particularly the doctors' union, but also the unions representing other NHS mm. staff. Any major change, any significant change in working practices, in working hours, hands are going to be put out saying, well, how much you can, more are you going to pay us yeah. for doing this? Yeah. It's a change of our role, you know? Exactly right. And, and I mean, that is what fa what faces them. I mean, I was talking to somebody over the weekend who had to visit their mother in hospital um, over the weekend. And she said, you know, you don't believe how quiet it was. There's nobody there. They still don't work at the weekends. I mean, I know obviously they've got A&E departments and all of that. But most hospitals and car parks in hospitals are deserted at the weekend still. Yeah. Well, some of them are deserted during the week as well. I mean, um, local GP surgeries you go into for an appointment and there's no one there. Right. Um, and, and then and then you go to, uh, I mean... But yeah, you know, then they say they're I'm, too busy to see everybody and they can't work more than three days a week as GPs because they'll burn themselves out. Well, the, of course, many, many, many uh, GPs now are part-time. Mm. Um, and and that, that has, we've trained a lot more GPs, but of course we're not getting the hours from them that we would have hoped when we invested in their training. No, exactly. Let's have a look at what Keir Starmer said to Lord Kunzberg yesterday uh, on, the, on the NHS and the state of it. Everybody watching this who has used the NHS or relatives have know that it's broken. They know that it's broken. That is unforgivable, the state of our NHS. The last government broke the NHS. Our job now, through Lord Darcy, is properly understand how that came about and bring about the reforms, starting with the first steps, the 40,000 extra appointments. But we've got to do the hard yards of reform as well. And as I say, I think it's only a Labour government that can do the reform that our NHS needs, and we'll start on that journey. Yes. Um, the spending for the NHS in 2024 is £179.6 billion. I don't think anybody can argue they haven't got enough money. It's not about money, Mike, and, and neither is the background to this during the last 14 years being anything to do with money. Um, this is an absolute myth. What it is to do with is, is poor management, um, lack of productivity, um, a, a lack of uh, uh, the, the balance between clinical and non-clinical staff needs addressing big time um, and, and, and that can be done in my opinion when I, when I worked in the NHS as a chair mm. up to mid 2020 one of the things that I and a number of my other non-executive colleagues on the board used to bang on about was the costs involved in non-clinical staff and it's not just the the um, EDI people, although they 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 needn't be there, you no. know. That, 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 well, I mean, they certainly don't need issue. to be paid the kind of money they're paid. I saw an advert for somebody uh, to be a diversity assistant somewhere in some hospital or other. Might be in Exeter, seventy five thousand a year. Yeah, I mean, in, Mike, in the private sector, yes. if if they had this situation, what would happen is that the the chief executive will be told by the shareholders, look, you've got to reduce your costs. Yeah. They need to re reduce their non-clinical costs big time. And I, I've been in businesses in, in the private sector in my past career where we were told, you've got to take 10% out of your costs. Right. 
and and I I did it without affecting at all at all what the product was um, and and how that worked and the income. But actually, there's always ways with the right with the right digital uh, background to it and, and the right determination. And you know. It, what they should be doing, the NHS, uh, the NHS England level, is saying to trusts, look, you've got to take 10% out of your costs. We're not interested in talking to you about why you can't. Right. We just so need to have a plan it's, now it's, to do it. It's an endemic problem, isn't it? I mean, you've worked in media companies, I know, uh, as I have all my life. And, you know, everywhere you work, at some point or other, you're asked to trim, you know, spending, you're asked to cut back on expenses, you're asked to cut back on, um, you know, taxis or something like that. You know, the number of wastes... Uh, wasteful things that happen in every sort of uh, NHS hospital and in every um, health trust is prodigious. But as you say, there's no culture of actually cutting. There's only culture of more spending. Absolutely. And Mike, I mean, I always managed to cut costs when asked to in the groups I work for. Yeah. And never did I cut the costs of, of editorial or advertising sales, which yeah. were absolutely fundamental to our operations we did it by cutting the number of finance people by the, the number of people who who actually weren't core to what we were doing mm. and what we needed to achieve and the nhs don't have that mentality i don't think the public sector does i mean that your previous caller who, who i think phoned in on whatsapp said you know about the the, the uh, gdp 48 percent of yes. it being in the public sector we've generated a dependency mentality mm. People are either dependent on the public sector for their employment or they're dependent on the public sector for their benefits yes. or both. We've got a really, really bad situation. Mm. Yeah. Um, I have no confidence whatever that, that it's going to be sorted by the current group of people in government. No, absolutely not. I don't think anybody else has any confidence either. M Martin, great to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed. I'm